This video, I'm going to be sharing with you seven vibrational rules you must not break. Some of these are quite esoteric. Nonetheless, simply knowing this and listening to this video will change the way you see the world. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you seven of the vibrational rules, many of which are very esoteric. They came from a book that was written in the early 1900s that uh, was way ahead of its time. And it has to do with understanding how everything is vibration plus how our thoughts, even though we don't physically see all of our thoughts until they're uh, until we create them into something or materialize them, that those are actually things. So we may go out into the world and there are thought forms that are emanating out of people. That's why we, people have an auric field. There are thought, in a way, bubbles that are within our energetic fields and we go when we go out into the world, we are bumping into these thought forms. And if we resonate with some of them, we may find that they have certain influence over us. Well, once you start to know and see how thought and vibration works, you start to see the whole world differently. And these seven ones I share with you, one or two I've shared before, but a lot of them are completely new, and I'm excited to share them with you. Now, the first one has to do with having an ugly house. Now, I read this in that book that I'm talking about. Uh, the book, I think it's something about thoughts, some thought energy, I forget the name of the book. but. What it said is that when you are going, and if you go in front of a house and you look at an ugly house, it says don't have an ugly house. Because if you have an ugly house, when people pass your house, if they look at it, and let's say there's plywood on it, let's say there's uh, um, different parts of it that are unnecessarily quote unquote ugly, what happens is as people see that and in a way judge it, they are leaving the thought energy as they walk past it and that then kind of emanates in front of the house. So in a way, this leaving, these people are leaving a trail of energy as they see certain things, and then that is something that as you drive into your, your you know, you pull into your driveway, maybe something that then influences you in subconscious ways. So once again, I know that not always, you know, we can't always control whether we have an ugly house, and what is an ugly house to someone, maybe like a beautiful house to someone else. But in general, I guess this could mean if there is like a lot of plywood on it, or uh, there's, uh, when you see it, like how does it make you feel? And I know this sounds kind of trivial, this is something I read in the book, and it was just something I found very interesting. And now on the reverse side of it, think about this. This, you, this is when you start to see things differently. If you go to a museum, and you're looking at amazing art, and as you're looking at this amazing art, you're, you're appreciating it, you're feeling a certain way. And a lot of other people that are art enthusiasts go to the same museum and do the same thing. They appreciate that art. Well, when you go into that art museum and you're walking around, there's thought forms of appreciation around. There's thought forms of people enjoying looking at the art. So, in the same way that you have, you know, you have, it can be something negative where people feel negative emotion and then it leaves a trail. It can also leave positive emotion. So the first one, the first weird vibrational rules is don't have an ugly house. And if you can't control that, then um, what you could do is you could just imagine it as beautiful, appreciate the house that you already have as well. Here's another thing too, let me, let me reframe this, because as, as I'm sharing this, I thought it was like a cool little weird thing, but as I'm sharing it, some people may be, the, none of this by the way is meant to be fearful or meant, meant to be like it's a make or break thing. However, you will only be affected by those negative thought forms if you also agree that it is an ugly house. So you have to resonate with it. So if you appreciate the house, even though other people may not, then it won't have an effect on you. So let me give that caveat right there. But that was the idea in the book, and it was one that I thought was interesting. The second vibrational rule that you may have never heard of is don't let people argue in your house. Now this is something that I have a kind of a rule. Right now I'm in an Airbnb in uh, Vegas as I find a new house. However, I remember the last house that I had, uh, maybe you remember it, it was like, I think I have like 500 YouTube videos that I made there. That was, um, you know, is that real open floor plan, kind of echoey and some people were like, oh, it's echoing too much. Uh, that was the house. And when I first got the house, I had my dad and my sister come over, who I love very much. 
and they came over, and one of the first days they came over, they were looking at the house, and then they started bickering about something very dumb. And they started bickering and started arguing. And I, I was kind of protective of my house, so as they were arguing, I was like, listen, you guys can argue in the backyard, do not argue in my house. And that was just kind of a weird rule that I had. Don't mean to be the party pooper, but I knew and have known about energy since, and it's like when you're projecting out something like that, and you're projecting out anger or conflict, that's going into the field, that's going into the, the house itself. And then, it's, it's like walking around, there are that, there's that, that kind of thought forms bubbling around. So, what I learned to do, and what I do, is if people come over, I always sage no matter what. I sage the house, which is in a way a permission slip for us to clear out the inner energy of the people that were there before. And also to clear out the energy of just uh, some of the energy buildup that may happen. I've also had it before to where I'm personally thinking about something that may be feeling more negative about or something I'm feeling resistance about. What I'll then do is I'll be thinking about it. I remember one time I was in a certain part of my house. I left that side of the house, went to another side of the house, completely forgot about what I was angry about, then came back to that side of the house I was at when I was feeling those negative thoughts or whatever, and I started having those same thoughts again. I feel like I left, came back, that thought energy was there, and I tapped back into to it. So it's about understanding that thoughts are literally things and whatever vibration or emotion people are feeling, they're emanating into the environment. Now the third one, I'm going to do this a two, a two thing one. So the clothes that you wear, now I've talked about this before, the clothes that you wear based on the, though, so though this rule could be never buy Hammy, never wear hand-me-down clothes without first clearing it. How about that? It's like a cool style thing too to wear it kind of like go to Buffalo Exchange or something that we have here in Vegas and people like to buy the hand-me-down clothes. However, never buy hand-me-down clothes without first energetically clearing it. Could be just with your, your thoughts, imagine purifying the energy, but you don't know who was wearing the clothes before. And if somebody that was wearing it before maybe was uh, feeling a certain type of emotion, maybe it was a very angry person, you wouldn't really know, but you could find that if you just wear it, you could find that you have more thoughts of feeling a little bit more angry. I know for me, there was a, I was going through a lot of personal work, I guess you could say, back a, about almost exactly a year ago, in December and January of 2000, and, what is that, 18 going into 19. And when I was feeling that negative emotion, there was a certain shirt I was wearing. I had like five of the same shirt. And I was wearing this like white shirt, and every time I would wear it, I was feeling this, I was going through this stuff. Well, then I stopped wearing that shirt, started wearing other clothes, went back to the same shirt, and it was a similar type thing where I started having similar thoughts. And I remember one time Lior, uh, who many of you know, she was wearing a sweater, and she started to feel very angry. And she could not figure out why. And maybe she was just feeling angry, because who knows? Maybe something subconsciously happened, who knows? But she couldn't figure out a reason, but then she realized she was wearing a sweater that one of her ex-boyfriends gave her, and it was one of her ex-boyfriends that she had a lot of conflict with. And she then realized that she was wearing that same sweater and she hadn't worn it in a long time, had it been energetically cleared. So your clothes, the clothes that you wear, clear it. Does it, all of these things I share, does that mean you have to get rid of it? You have to get rid of your house if it's an ugly house, you have to get rid of all your clothes. But in general, there is like a, a general rule that if you can, to somehow switch out or energetically clear your clothes every so often. It doesn't have to be all the time, but just, you know, I don't know, every couple of years, maybe realize that you're in a phase of your life, maybe somehow get some new clothes or set that intention and, and uh, create that in your life. Now, the fourth one has to do with something that's kind of, uh, you may have never heard before. Never have a house close to a butcher or a prison. A butcher or a prison. Now, think of it. Now, the people and the energy that's going on in a butcher, in a place, a butcher house, or a prison would be normally very resistant energy. In a prison, you have a lot of people that don't want to be there. Some people that may have, you know, done some violent things. There's a certain energy thought field that's been accumulated there from the people that are there. And then a butcher, you can imagine what's going on there. And there's a certain energy that emanates from it. So this is also from that one book I was talking about. And it said, never have a house or move close to that of a butcher or a prison. Now, I remember. Uh, running around in Japan and there's a huge city in Japan in Tokyo and there was this big prison that had like prison guards in the front of it and it was gated out but I remember when I would run by it I remember kind of feeling that energy a little bit 
And, and then eventually I started running down a different route because I was like running every morning. And it kind of made me realize that there is a collective energy field of the places we go. And if your house, you know, once again, these things are detrimental, but maybe put something around your house. If you do live close to a prison or a butcher shop or, you know, think of anywhere you go where there's certain activities going on, think of the vibration of those activities. Maybe even like a, a judge house or courthouse or something. Maybe that wouldn't be the most wise to live next to. Remember, these things don't have power over you, but becoming aware of it, if you can uh, kind of in a way bypass it, then maybe it does a little bit, makes it a little bit easier for you. So having your house close to that of, of things that are more high vibrational, you know, if you're close to a park, that could be a very good thing. If you're in nature, that could be a very good thing. But in general, never have your house next to a butcher house or butcher shop, yeah, butcher shop, or that of a prison. Now, the fifth one has to do with understanding the five people you're around the most. General vibrational rule. Now, it's not so much that these five people you're around the most. It's not so much that it's just that your thoughts are going to link up with them. It's not so much uh, has to do with that, even though it is. Like, that's very true. The people you're around the most, you tend to become. But it's not just the thoughts or the actions that, you know, if you want to, you know, work out and get in shape and all your five friends that you're around the most are telling you, oh, why are you trying to do that? And they're influencing you to not go to the gym. Even more than that, their vibration, which is a combination of how they think, act, and feel, their dominant vibration is influencing you. So be very aware of that. Are they, are they living the way that you like to live? Are they embodying the qualities that you want to also in quality, or also embody? and be aware of that. So the five people you're in the, around the most, it's a vibrational rule that you wanna know that, that they are influencing you. So what I would say is get some people in your group that are a little bit ahead of you in a way and maybe are a little bit more vibrationally how you like to be. If you wanna be more compassionate, then have someone in your as one of your five people that's a more compassionate person. If you wanna be more grateful, find someone that you know is very grateful. If you wanna be good with people, find somebody that's very good with people. This vibration will influence you in very powerful ways. Now, the six weird vibrational uh, rule that you must know about has to do with something that's very, it's much more esoteric. Now, uh, this is also from that book, but it talks about what are called negative entities. Oh, scary. And when we hear this right now, it's like, oh, that's pretty esoteric. I know that. However, I do believe that there is more to reality than the 3D physical sense perceptions that we have. And I do believe that there are entities, positive and negative, that may exist at different levels of vibration. Now, what we call negative entities may attach themselves to certain people whose energy field resonates with them. So for example, if somebody's feeling angry, frustrated, and mad, there could be certain lower vibrational entities that like to attach themselves to that energy field. So in a way, it's like those attachments come when you're also in a lower vibrational state. And what you'll find is that if you raise your vibration, these things don't influence you in a negative way because the energy that you emanate isn't one they feel comfortable with. So this is about being aware. Also be aware you have spiritual guides that are always with you, always with you. And you have many spiritual guides, more than just one. And so you're never really alone. And it's about being aware that if you ever need help or you're ever worried about this, call upon your guides. I have a meditation as well that will help you connect to your higher self, which also includes connecting to your guide. So it's a it's a meditation for connecting to your higher self. I'll go ahead and link it below. Uh, one of the I met somebody at Rhythm in Costa Rica where I went and I invited uh, some subscribers to come as well. A really cool girl named Nikki. She's like, hey, Aaron, I just want you to know that I met my higher self when during your higher self meditation. My higher self's total, real cool. I was like, dang, that's really cool. So. Um, yeah, if you want to experience something similar, listen to this meditation for 21 days and uh, I think it'll change your life in many ways. And you'll also become more aware of how these, these energies work. So that's the sixth one is be aware of your own energy and what kind of things may be attracted to that energy. Raise your own vibration so you don't have to deal with that. Once again, there's no fear here. I'm just explaining that these are things that may or may not be true. Now, the seventh one has to do with crowds of people. When you go, the reason when you go into a crowd of people that it feels so chaotic, especially to empathic people, is that when you go into crowds of people, you have many, let's say there's a hundred people. You got a hundred people in a crowd that are all thinking of different things. So their thought patterns may be very scattered. 
or they need to just be on very specific things and they're all different. Somebody may be thinking about picking up their kids. Somebody may be thinking about what they want to eat. Somebody may be thinking about what their boss said. Somebody may be thinking about, uh, so you see all these different perspectives. So when you go into that field, you've got all this chaos of so many different thought forms, so many different intentions, so many different energies, and that can bombard your energetic system. So the key is about understanding your own energy and raising your own vibration. Even when you go into crowds, you can set the intention that your energy is uh, grounded within yourself. You can become more present inside of your body and then these thought forms won't affect you so much. So be aware that when you're in crowds, there may be this scattering of energy that's happening. Uh, you could probably feel that if you go into those crowds. Be aware of all these different things of vibration, how they influence you, and set the intention right now that this week you become more aware of how vibration works and watch how that then begins to change so much in your life because you start to make new decisions with that awareness. So listen to that meditation below. Other than that, hope you enjoyed this video. Peace, much love, and namaste.